will come back for the second. India have won the test match. India have won the series. They're going to get back for two. India home. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the ATO All Out podcast. This is your host Siddhartha Vaidyanathan. and we are here today to review the final of the world test championship between india and australia at the oval australia won by 209 runs and um, you know they are the second winners of the mes uh, that is awarded for the world test championship uh, so we have two cycles of uh, this tournament or if you may call it league or whatever that has happened and uh, new zealand have been the winners and first winners and australia the second india the runners up on both occasions so anyway let me welcome the panel pretty you, two of them usual one of them becoming a usual so uh, let me first welcome prashant prashant who is uh, you know as we often joke part of the knowledgeable chennai crowd uh, who uh, is also a big cricket fan and uh, a wonderful cricket writer who blogs from time to time a link his articles and um, you know you can take in some of uh, some wonderful writing hey prashant nice to have you back hi sir we thanks nice to be here great and uh, then we have the two usuals uh, ashoka who is at abivan on twitter most regular listeners will know about ashoka he speaks for uh, millions and millions of people with his uh, raw emotion hey ashoka hi man hello <laughs> hello <laughs> and uh, also welcoming um, at cricketing view also known as kartik adate uh, columnist uh, for who has written for espn cricket for for multiple years also has a substack one of the most trenchant voices on twitter as somebody said hey kartik yeah i have to live up to that now yeah 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 you have to live up to that uh, yeah. kartik of course uh, wildly celebrating um, pat cummins victory in the final i mean pat cummins bucked that he is wilding as they say on twitter ashoka of course uh, still in ipl hangover i'm sure he is uh, not even uh, worried about world test championship hey csk congrats man great job thanks man <laughs> and the third regular of us who uh, is not here of course is mahesh who disappeared into the depths of paris to watch uh, some irrelevant tennis tournament to see some fellow win some 23rd uh, championship and all that so yeah he he boycotted the wtc final so he was not here um anyway so uh, let's start talking about big picture uh, match observations what you felt how it was first of all to start with i mean let me just say it was a really nice match for me to watch after a, you know it's been quite a deluge of short form cricket uh, IPL of course but even before that um the India Australia series was there but uh, it seems that the IPL went on for a while so to get back into test cricket was good also uh, it, to watch India and Australia play in a neutral venue itself is uh, not something that we have seen uh, that often and this was uh, nice to see what the two teams how the two teams approach the venue and what they do and the conditions and so all that and also the the match was actually you know it 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 could have been one you could have said it's a one sided game and if you look at the scorecard it definitely looks one sided but there were really a lot of passages of play that were great to see well well fought well contested and uh, some good bowling throughout uh, you know i enjoyed a couple of spells from scott bowling uh, really liked uh, nathan lyon bowling and um, there was a one mohammad siraj spell also that um, you know was really captivating to watch overall result wise i mean i think from an indian team point of view i mean they look at it as a missed opportunity again i mean just as we have we spoke after the series in south africa when they lost to one we spoke after the last world test championship final when they lost to new zealand um, we spoke after the that uh, test in england that they lost and then the series was 2-2 i mean they were leading 2-1 and then they lost that test and um, they have lost this now so you know leave leave alone the I, i'm i'm not going to be clubbing together formats and talking about all the uh, other one day and t20 icc events because i don't think 
that's fair to the test team because the test team is you know has its own set of players who don't play one day cricket and t20 cricket but yeah i think purely from the point of view of this test team and for the sort of the team they've built and the times they've had it's a big missed opportunity i mean uh, who knows how many of these players will be around two years later for the next cycle i really doubt if uh, this team is going to you know stay the way it is i'm sure there'll be like at least two three new players coming in the bowlers are pretty much reaching a stage where bowlers think of retiring they lose a bit of pace they lose you know there's a certain level of fitness that goes away so yeah uh, this could be the last time we see this core group of players together so yeah that's what is my um sort of feel about the whole thing ashoka go for it <laughs> i think this is going to be a csk season review but go for it <laughs> yes my worst fears have been confirmed dude like when you said let's talk about the final i happily came to this pod then i realized you're talking about some test match what the hell is a test match man who watches test matches these days it's a rubbish yeah, there thing like- 13 13 lakh uh, people watching it on hotstar like a few days after some 3 crore people watched the ipl final or something 3 crore uh, where are the rest like 78 crore indians dropped everything and watched uh, dhoni lift the trophy no no so, so that's the oh. thing dhoni didn't even lift it he let others lift it no yeah, yeah we should yeah that is correct that's a very valid point so yeah so uh, and i watched this match again this is a repeat of the first final where you know the match was competitive for a very long while but you know the scorecard doesn't reflect it i mean it looks like india lost by a large margin but a few things here and there could have you know made this a very different result is what i felt india competed for a large portion of this test match and if if luck had gone their way they would have won this test match and a few things didn't go their way and and that's fine see for see for me there there is a way of seeing it which is not a popular way of seeing it uh, right about now everybody is saying that india are kind of chokers when they reach the finals and semi finals and they lose i don't know i mean i think reaching finals and semi finals takes a lot of fucking effort in a wtc where you know your final is like a game after 2 years uh, you should have done well to be there only two teams make it and you made it twice which means that you're pretty good at playing test cricket so that's my baseline you know i i can i can understand i mean i i've i've had a very educational last 24 hours because i have understood a lot of anger directed in my twitter mentions because i put out a tweet and then like a uh, like half of twitter has de- descended and used every kind of swear word that is there in human existence to tell me that i am you know what, we are all very what angry. was the what was the tweet by the way i just put i was just watching the post match because i wanted to see what happens like they lift the trophy and all that i usually don't watch post match shows this one instance i think uh, sunil gavaskar got uh, severely angry at and then he went ballistic he was like what what kind of shot was that that was an ordinary shot this that and the other so it was very funny for me i mean we that was about the virat kohli dismissal in the yeah. second innings right yeah 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 okay so it's funny for me so i put out the clip and then everybody you know started uh, shouting at everybody i which is fine which is what happens on twitter this was a very educative experience because you don't get to see the full gamut of emo- emotions right everything was presented in my mentions i was just reading through oh okay these are the swear words that you need to use when you are in delhi next time or oh these okay, are the okay, swear okay. words that you need to use when you are in telangana andhra next time so okay <laughs> fine i got it a very educative so, experience you you were you basically suffered the consequences of a banger as they say as indian fans if you've been following uh, cricket for like you know 30 plus years then you know winning a uh, three series against australia two in australia like three consecutive i mean and then winning uh, you know c- coming really close to winning in south africa uh, demolishing west indies in west indies uh, you know all uh, you know blanking sri lanka and you know in going and winning in sri lanka those are all like things that we didn't see that often earlier so these are all fine terrific performances and even in india i mean this team has taken it like way up a notch i mean india were 
always like really good at home but this team has been like invincible so yeah all that is definitely true but uh, unfortunately you know sports fandom requires that transcendental moment right and we have spoken about that also on this podcast many times about the memories of uh, sport and how people want that crowning glory uh, and which hasn't happened now you if you choose to you know go with that then the, there will be that narrative and everyone seems to read that anyway prashant uh, thoughts uh, overall picture because no uh, before before you go to prashant uh, before you go to prashant i was just being reasonable but uh, that's just an act now let's talk about the original thing like who's who's going to sack all these ipl frauds that, that's the question <laughs> IPL frauds you mean the frauds who don't play IPL also have to be frauds who like, get like 70 70 80 crores in IPL per match and but they don't do anything in tests they average like 25 in tests who's going oh, to okay. send them all to csk so that tala can train them for 6 months they'll come back as better test cricketers who's going to do that that's what you i know, want I to actually, know actually i actually saw a suggestion where people said that bcci should convince uh, tala to come back to uh, international cricket to win india one icc trophy and then retire again as if this guy is like <laughs> what what is this man okay but i think this is what csk has done to people it has spoiled them um prashant who should we sack <laughs> um <laughs> i can give you a list of commentators but i don't think that's going to help <laughs> okay <laughs> uh so for me this test match was uh, really interesting because in a sense it was it was almost every test match no i mean uh i think india stayed competitive for much longer than they had any business being because they, their lack of depth was shown up you know just like australia's lack of depth was shown up in india i think in this test in these conditions india's lack of depth was shown up uh the idea that you judge an attack based on its weaker bowlers rather than its stronger ones was amplified in this test match i mean you that's basically what happened you had siraj and shami who were extremely threatening in bursts and the backup was just not as threatening at all and if you contrast that with australia where you know uh, even their i mean you can argue saying that their most their least lethal bowler bowled their most lethal ball in this test match right i mean uh, that that's how threatening the attack was as a whole so i wasn't surprised in the least that the result went the way it did i had australia as favorites at the start yeah i mean without uh, first of all india was starting without bumrah and pant you know that is like the equivalent of saying australia starting a test match without cummins and who can it be green maybe given the flexibility he gives them he gives india pant maybe like green or he may be like you know pant has also been like one of our best test batters for the last couple of years so you can even say labushain or something as a comp- uh, as a comparison and it's not uh, easy going in without two such players and uh, yeah australia and and this is conditions outside india so automatic in in england so australia obviously scott boland is a threat i mean he's i think he's like a fantastic bowler in these kind of conditions so and he is there you know weaker bowler so you know he was he coming after stark cummins and lion so yeah uh kartikeya uh congratulations pat cummins has lifted a trophy finally <laughs> finally so after these two openers i am the trenchant one no huh? <laughs> i i was quoting someone man trenchant so uh, go for it there are two things that i noticed one is that you know in both the 21 final and the 23 final uh india had the shorter bowlers you know australia's bowlers are taller than india's you know they had that nice graphic showing the release points you know from the highest to the lowest and the first four were all australian fast bowlers right uh, and i think even nathan lyon has a higher release point than some of the indian fast bowlers uh and even in 21 it was the same thing you know new uh, new zealand had very tall bowlers you know jameson and company and that's an advantage on these wickets you know then 
and basically that was one thing and the second thing is the australian bowlers i think attacked the stumps better than the indian fast bowlers i think in the indian fast fast bowlers you know set out a little bit wide and i think one of the things i noticed is that the you know they tried to put a leg slip especially for labushin and then also for smith you know to try and get the bowling to be a little straighter but it didn't it didn't really work you know so so those are the two sort of main things which i think differentiated that made that 173 run first innings lead and after that it was basically all set you know the you know, 173 run first innings lead are not 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 overcome you know most of the time you know even in like when india won at the oval 2 years ago i think the first innings lead was what something just about 100 you know so that that 100 is one thing you know 173 is like two sessions of batting if you bat like well uh so th- those were the those were the two sort of main uh, main sort of distinguishing features i thought and the second distinguishing feature was that uh if, while india bowled wide their troubles were made worse by the fact that you know australia had travis head who took a lot of chances and they kept coming off you know and they came came off for like 160 odd runs which is not really going to happen very often i mean he played like 54 fall shots he's not going to survive that many in too many innings in his in his life in his career you know uh, so that i mean that 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 was that was that that was something that could have been mitigated a little bit if india had bowled on the stumps a little bit more and bowl a little straight or attack the stumps better uh but yeah basically i think these are the two things which which shape this this shape this game and uh, i know there's this this whole question of you know whether you should play four fast bowlers or whether you should play two spinners and all is there but i don't think that makes that much of a difference you know it's not like ashwin is going to run through teams on 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 this so i mean ashwin would have taken 18 wickets man in this wicket okay but coming back to uh, in all seriousness uh, between the now and the point, end of his life <laughs> yeah that is the big worry now <laughs> if he doesn't play uh, at, then they will take only 18 wickets between now and the end of his career uh, but the point about height is interesting because when we this came up even during the south africa uh, south africa series right when india went to south africa and uh, Uh, th- they lost 2-1 yeah. that was uh, the uh, dis- you, one of the distinguishing features that you had mentioned even then with uh, so their taller Janssen. bowlers having the yeah yeah jansen and uh, olivier and uh, uh, rabada and uh, lungi engidi yeah. yeah yeah but yeah. then so, it, so it was it, not as pronounced you know i don't think the i don't think the height advantage was as pronounced in south africa as it was here you know for one thing india had bumra in south africa and they didn't have bumra here so that was a problem the other thing is that south africa the pitches are a bit quicker you know so even in australia the wickets are a little bit quicker so even if you are not a very tall fast bowler and you're not like hammering the pitch over after over you can still get something out of it you know you can still and so you know shami and all these bowlers siraj and all these bowlers they can sort of extract some life out of the, those these, these those pitches you know i mean this was i mean it's not that it's not that it's not that india bowled badly it's that australia had the raw material to get more out of the pitch than india did and you know they helped themselves by bowling straight straighter than india did you know so but how does it work in india though because these bowlers are fantastic in india on pitches that are not as quick as uh, in places. right so i think i think the main distinction between india and england is that in india the ball doesn't bounce as much so for instance i have uh, ball tracking records for shami and all the indian bowlers for the last 4 5 years for most of the tests right and uh, in india shami hits the stumps with 21% of his balls and in england he hits the stumps with only 13% of his balls which means that you know it's roughly like in india he's hitting the stumps once every five balls and in england he's hitting the stumps once every eight balls you know because i think the lengths with which he can hit the stumps in india is a much r- wider range you know like he, he can still 
he can probably bowl eight meters in India and still hit the stumps sometimes, or seven and a half meters and still hit the stumps. Whereas in England, he has to sort of be on six meters, five and a half meters to hit the stumps. And whereas the Australian bowlers, they 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 have a, this taller release, no? So they can bowl a little bit fuller and you know still not get driven, even though they did get driven quite often. Like especially with Mitchell Stark, you know. And and then actually the whole Mitchell Stark. Shardul Thakur comparison is interesting because both of them are, I think, basically the same bowler. You know, like they're extremely attacking bowlers. They're constantly trying to, you know, attack the stumps. Thakur is constantly trying to bowl the magic ball. You know, he goes a little bit wider the stumps and fires it into middle stump, hoping then it'll tail off to a slip. And most of the time it doesn't. And then he gets taken for runs to the leg side. You know, but he bowled, he keeps bowl, trying to bowl that attacking ball. Instead of, you know, bowling back of a length like Boland, who is like metronomically, you know, at- attacking that fourth stump all the time. You know, Mitchell Stark is also like that. He's extremely attacking. That's why he gets hammered so much. But the point is that, you know, Mitchell Stark has vastly superior raw material to Shardul Thakur. You know, firstly, he's much quicker than Shardul Thakur. And secondly, he's much taller than Shardul Thakur. So he's got like, he's he, when he attacks, he, he can do a lot more. You know, whereas Shardu Thakur basically has to bowl a magic ball or, you know, do something like, you know, get Steve Smith played on like that, which he, I mean, it's remarkable how many, how many wickets Shardu Thakur gets for like crab balls. You know, I think it was, it was Jared or someone who was saying that, uh, you know, bowlers should never get wickets like that, but Thakur gets them like every other spell or something <laughs> Yeah, I, w- I would think the comparison is more uh, Stark and Siraj. I mean, both relentlessly attacking and Siraj yeah, also yeah, yeah. has similar raw material to Stark. Yeah, yeah, they have similar raw material. But, you know, Siraj, see, I've seen Siraj bowl like attritional spells, you know, where he, he, he can bowl dry. And he's got, I mean, Siraj is a much better bowler than Tadul Thakur. I mean, the comparison was in approach, not in ability. Uh, no, not got in, it, got it. Yeah. The pitch at the oval was a little bit up and down. I mean, there was a fair degree of uh, variable bounce in the sense that you had a lot of batsmen getting hit on the hand and stuff like that. And when that happens, that is always magnified by a taller bowler. So when there is a little bit of up and down, you'll find taller bowlers generally doing well. I mean, Curtly Ambrose was lethal. I mean, he would have been lethal on this surface. I mean, a little bit of up and down. And even the ball that uh, Stark got Kohli out with, I mean... The variation in bounce I remember seeing somewhere on Twitter was something like one and a half feet. Now, if a shorter bowler had bowled the ball at the same pace in the same spot, I don't know if it would have leapt up as much. Probably not. And it is that degree of exaggeration that helps the taller bowler get the wicket on a wicket which is doing a little bit as this was. When we're talking about a short ball, you know, a, a, a bouncer by Tino Best is very different from a bouncer by Curtly Ambrose. In the sense that Tino Best probably will need to get put in a little bit more effort to get the ball to bounce that much more. He may have to bowl it a little bit shorter. And that means that he's giving more information to the batsman. He's giving more cues to the batsman. The taller bowler can afford to uh, bowl it slightly closer to the batsman and get the same degree of lift. And therefore, his short baller, his bouncer is not as easy to spot as a shorter bowler. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with uh, trusting the speed gun, right? I mean, there's only so much that the speed gun tells you. It doesn't tell you the trajectory that a batsman is actually facing. Like a Joel Garner was probably not as quick as, uh, say, uh, some other uh, bowlers going around, but he was coming at you from 10 feet. And, you know, he's getting the the ball is going to be rising on you at an angle that you have never faced before. So, you know, all that matters. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, does, you don't uh, see that on TV that often. Does a speed gun tell you the pace at which it reaches the batsman or the pace that it has left the bowler's hand? Uh, the first one. Uh, sorry, the... Second release, one, right? Re- yeah, no, second no. one. Release. Yeah. Yeah. The speed at which the ball is released, correct. Yeah, yeah, but nowadays with ball in, in the ball tracking, you get everything. You get you get the speed at at release. You get speed at the batting end. You get deceleration after pitching. Everything you get. Yeah, yeah, but but I'm saying on a ball by ball basis, you're not seeing that as a viewer, right? You're just seeing yeah, speed. as a viewer. No, but I am seeing it. Yeah. No? 
yeah yeah that's true i'm saying that the the speed causes that uh, illusion that you're like you know oh this this guy is bowling only at this speed and yet they're getting out but come on you that's not the only thing no yeah, my but- my whole contention with this is like what would be more useful is the speed at which it reaches the batsman the speed when the batsman is attempting the stroke or not the speed at which the, it leaves the bowler's hand is more, more you know broadcaster friendly you can then say 150 kilometers per hour 160 rather than once it pitches it loses speed right like then it is at a far lesser speed when it reaches the batsman that that is actually far more you know informational than the one day show yeah and you know the those two dismissals in the first inning so you know, gill and uh, pujara i mean I, leaving uh, hmm. yeah they were both good leaves there i mean the ball didn't bounce as much as it <laughs> would prop normally have you know so they were both like 8 meter lengths and stuff so it was not like uh things to, these these games turn on like these little things you know and it's very it's nearly impossible to sort of persuade anybody that that happened you know because you know they, they, if the batsman gets bowled by definition it's a bad leave but you know i'm not so sure that it was a bad leave either by gill or by uh pujara so so kartike i have a question for you um it i found it really interesting okay my initial reaction when uh when those two leaves happened my initial reaction was that that's an error of judgment okay my i my first reaction was not to praise the bowler okay but when the bharat dismissal happened right my initial reaction was oh my god that's a jaffa okay even though i when i look at the replays i'm wondering if you know how different is it really from the first two so i'm curious since you've scraped the data the ball tracking data was the deviation of the bharat uh, clean bowl any more or less or same as the 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 gill and the pujara dismissal the what the ball tracking says is that the gill ball the ball which dismissed gill the ball which dismissed pujara and the, and the ball which dismissed bharat basically the same ball they are basically identical yeah. Yeah. in terms of line length and deviation of the wicket yeah yeah you know? no so that was the sense i got when i watched the replay and then i realized that they basically the same ball and yet my reaction to the first two dismissals was the batsman goofed up and my reaction to the third was it's an absolute jaffa bharat makes it look like a jaffa because he sort of you know pushes out and plays at it you know rather than you know doing the opener or top order batters thing and 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 trying to leave as much as he can you know i mean it was they were they all started out fairly wide of off stump you know so i mean if bharat had left it it wouldn't have been a bad it wouldn't have been a bad judgment or anything like that no i mean but see movement is generally unplayable man i mean you there's not much you can do when the ball seems that much you know you, you have to hope that like you you block it you know and it, would they have left it in india though? would they have left it in india oh, i don't know i don't think so i mm. i mean i think these guys generally don't leave much in india yeah i i exa- i thought that was my impression though that it was almost like uh, they they trusted the pitch enough for it to go you know either above or wide uh, gideon gideon hay had a sort of a uh, interesting point when talking about shubman gill he said uh, you know gill has been in such great form in uh, you know the shorter versions uh, that he has been playing and ipl also he was in such great form that mm-hmm. there could have been a bit of compensation the other way around where he started feeling that okay now we that i am in a test match i have to play a little differently now this is a bit of mind reading from gideon but i thought it was a interesting point about switching of formats that he spoke about so i mean look look at See Ben Duckett, I shared that stat right on uh, message with you guys. I mean, he's left eight times in six tests, man. I mean, he's here. You're talking about a test opener, and uh, you know he's just going after everything. And if he gets out, he gets out. So this is how certain openers. I mean, he, he has he has chosen to play, and maybe uh, England, the England team has chosen to play with the baseball approach. But uh, you, yeah, everyone is different and. one ball leaving one ball i mean it doesn't make gill a lesser batter it just 
it's a good ball yeah so uh, the other interesting thing that i found when i was watching was um, uh, again as I, i think it was on the crickwiz handle they were mentioning that uh, travis head uh, of all the top order batters in the last in the, in this wtc cycle has defends only i think 19% of the time is basically one ball and over he's defending which is bonkers when you think about it in a test match and also interestingly this would he has been dismissed the least number of times by balls on a good length so where the average is 1 in 34 balls i think with travis head he's been dismissed only once in 134 balls which would suggest that uh the length that works for most other batters does not work for travis head he's essentially challenging you to shift your length itself as an attack which maybe india were not quick enough to respond to see, see i uh, i i understand all these facts but i have uh, important questions you guys are not addressing those questions first of all who needs to be dropped like <laughs> dravid dravid needs to be sacked for not picking ashwin then this guy goes and on the toss and says he will field first why then he carries his mumbai indian form and he fails two innings right then cheteshwar pujara attempts a ramp shot that needs to be you know that is like a criminal offense for pujara right and kohli chases a wide one all this you know these are the salient points is what i think but you guys are saying 19 degree deviation from the mean and all i don't understand <laughs> what the hell is this huh? okay okay hey. I'm, i want to come to that point actually with uh, kartikeya mentioning that bit about shardul thakur and about how you know he is so reliant on magic balls i mean we have there was this long discussion right mahesh and kartikeya were having on uh, message so if you are instead of if you have a bowler who is world class proven who okay i mean and he may not get he may not run through the side in england but he's still one of your best bowlers perhaps one of the best bowlers produced by india ever why would you not pick him ahead of shardul or ahead of uh, the the other uh, umesh who was your uh, you know third pacer that you picked uh, shardul of course is an all rounder i am putting him in the all rounder category and umesh as the third pacer but yeah uh, what is that thing i mean see honestly personally for me it was not a surprise at all because india have been doing this for a while i mean when they need one spinner they pick uh, they pick jadeja that is fine and so i that's fair i mean what what this is suddenly uh, you don't uh, change uh, you know the spinner to pick so i don't expect and i don't i'm not putting this as an ashwin v jadeja issue i think jadeja was going to play anyway but uh, ashwin v shardul or ashwin v umesh i think is a very fair uh, sort of uh, question to ask Ashoka, I think, is in a, a tongue-tied because he does not know whether to support Shardul or Ash- uh, Ashwin. Yeah, he's, he's, you put him, you've why, given him like you... Hobson's choice. Lord and, uh, <laughs> Lord and basically, you know, uh, you know, the author of Kutti stories. You know, this is your, your ex. <laughs> I, I had author, a solution. Ex, but ex these guys... Ex-CSP author of Kutti stories. You're basically what? You're, you, you are, you, you, no wonder he's silent, you know. Yeah he has just gone silent. No, no man I had a, I I I had a solution but uh, again you guys are so you know advanced theory in test matches but you always want five batters to bat. Who said five batters should bat? Uh, just like that I mean you could have batted with four batters for the batting performance you guys did. Have your top four but throw anybody away it doesn't it's not going to make any difference. Anybody Anyways, you're short, going number to number five is number five is Rahane. So you're saying you should have dropped Rahane. Keep Rahane, man. He's our most successful test captain. Throw that fellow, throw that Mumbai Indian fellow out. What is this nonsense? The Mumbai Indian to... fellow is your captain, man. <laughs> man, I mean, uh, see Dhoni, man. He played like what, 12 balls in this entire tournament team, won the cup. This guy could have uh, put toss and go and sat there, no, as a 12th man. Could have easily the accommodated. The toss also is bad. He chose to, he chose to feel. That also is bad. <laughs> this is like, uh, you know, uh i mean you need another lodha commission level commission to sit and decode the criminal activities that has gone in the last five days <laughs> and poor ashwin adjusted his sleep cycle during ipl or come on man i mean at least give that guy that a is, chance that is the most funniest article dude that's very cruel <laughs> but i i was laughing so much there was this article which said ashwin adjusted sleep sleep cycle 
went through data mountains of data on how to prepare and all that then this guy coolly comes and says no no we are playing shardul sorry boy no and that article came like on the eve of that test so it was almost like ashwin has been told that he is playing i mean that is the perception you get right like okay one day before the test one this uh, and the article had quoted uh, uh, prasanna extensively who is uh, fondly called p dog by ashwin himself is the data analyst and uh, quoted him extensively and also you think okay so may- maybe he's playing and then the next day next thing you know is drop i mean he's not playing yeah so okay can i can i bring some insanity back into the conversation after yeah, your yeah 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 okay so see that 6.9 meter length no that no no no, no wait 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 okay we will get to that but you first tell us about this oh, we uh... were there <laughs> 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 okay 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 continue continue we will come we'll come back to ashwin we won't forget we the, we never forget ah uh, go no we will get back to ashwin on that day i i promise we'll get to ashwin but see uh, that 6.9 meter length you know is very 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 interesting that's why i want to bring you to it you know those two balls you no know, to jadeja to which dismissed bagil and uh, uh, pujara uh, pujara you know i got uh, from my sources you no know, i got i got all the low down i got the data and i got i looked up the history and everything okay so a ball which lands on a 6 point so so before i keep in mind as a global thing that the height the top of the stumps are like roughly 76 cm above the ground okay so basically anything which is over 77 cm is passing over the stumps okay now 6.9 the 6.9 meter length uh, which both the pujara ball and the gill ball was 6.9 meter and i think the bharat ball was also 6.9 meters uh if the average ball on a 6.9 meter length in uh, england okay passes on average 78.1 cm above the stumps okay no uh, sorry some 78.1 cm above the ground so 2 cm above the stumps in australia it passes approximately 87 cm above the ground so that's 12 cm above the stumps no 11 cm above the stumps in south africa it's uh, 80 80 cm above the ground so that's 4 cm above the ground in new zealand it's 81 cm okay so basically if you if you if you assume that you know batsmen are uh creatures of habit and creatures of judgment then basically that 6.9 meter length is a length to leave on length uh, is 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 one which is where you leave the ball on length quite safely in most parts of the world you know but that ball which dismissed gill definitely kept low because it hit the stumps 67 cm above the ground and pujara's ball hit the some 69 cm above the ground so both gill and pujara were right to on balance no, to leave them no, but so, so, sorry just one second kartik i, I okay. actually after hearing the data i'm now wondering if those were actually good leaves because if you're saying that it passes at 78 cm above the ground yeah, and the stumps the stumps are 76 right so that's basically like 2 cm which is basically the radius of the ball itself Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, but that's that's generally in England, no? Oval. No, all the, all I'm saying is it's not. I mean, the, those are too fine. I mean, I can understand the data in Australia and South Africa where it's 87, it's passing like four five inches above the stumps. But actually, the data suggests that they were not good leaves. I'm. I mean, I'm not sure. That's the, that's the like average, no? And so that that's the central tendency of the of the of the of the height of the ball, you know? and and you add to the fact that. the balls were both fairly wide pitched fairly wide outside off stump you know so uh, the so what is the the bounce x for pujara's ball yeah see it's it's 50 cm from the uh, from middle stump and uh, gill gill's ball is uh, where is it yeah also 50 cm from middle stump so it's like two it's pitching like two stumps outside off stump Yeah, because the stump is basically 15 cm so it's actually three stumps outside of stump so i mean 6.9 meter length that wide outside of stump i, I think it's a good leave you know i mean they were bold so obviously you know in this instance it turned out to be a terrible leave but 
the ball, I mean, it, it is not unreasonable to expect to leave that on, on line and line. You know, so anyway. In, in, an, in an era where um, sources are telling people that Ashwin has been left out of the side because he is not a buck enough for this board and this government, uh, it is heartwarming to hear that your sources are giving you 69 centimeters versus 78 <laughs> centimeters. No, I mean, I- but this is what, man, first innings, they all left what they should have played. Second innings, they all played what they should have left. <laughs> Some yeah. rubbish, rubbish, actually, rubbish batting. I mean, that's actually a pretty good point. And because after that, what happened in the first inning? You know, there, there's every time Gil was in doubt in the second innings, he was definitely going to play because he, I don't think they trusted the bounce. Right. You know? So, I mean, and Pujara playing that ramp uh, is quite, I mean, I, how many times have we seen him ramp over the keeper? You know, yeah, I mean, when he doesn't, like... you say he lacks intent. When he shows ah, intent, correct. you say, what is this? Yeah, yeah. I'm an yeah. intent merchant. I'm an you... intent merchant. Yeah. I mean, but to me, is... no, but like, to, to arguing, be... with, arguing with you people is like, you know, you know, you know, having a boat with one hole and trying to plug that hole and still failing one. <laughs> I was surprised when I saw Pujara do it in a test. But then... I thought about it. I'd actually seen a few videos of him doing it for Sussex in Liste games last year. He did it, I think, quite repeatedly and quite with a certain degree of success. I was wondering why he was suddenly bringing the shot out in a test match. You know, it's not a shot I've seen him play often. Unfortunately, then, unfortunately, all those uh, ballers he faced while playing for Sussex bowled at 120. Ah, correct. <laughs> this was like 140, 138. <laughs> so the ball, you know, went faster than he expected. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anyway, we, we are like, you know, uh, getting into individual balls and leaves and judgment and all. So yeah, and we are, also bear in mind the, that. we are also making the mistake of, you know, uh, thinking that the balls on which dismissals occurred were somehow exceptionally important. You know, that I mean, the dismissals could have happened or not happened on any of the other balls equally. No? I mean, the... If you think, if you actually look at the control figures for this test match, the Indians created more jeopardy than the Australians. But this is a this is a feature of the control figures that you know the balls which are not hitting the stumps uh, tend to produce con- out of control responses more uh, frequently. But those those out of control responses get converted into dismissals also less frequently because when the ball is not on the stumps. Really, the only really mode of dismissal is caught. You know, whereas when the ball is on the stumps, LPW and bold are also in play, you know, among the common ones. So that that's sort of a little trade-off in the control figures. Yeah, that, you should we need a it. filter in the control figures too. That's a good uh, point because uh, you know it would be good to know how what is the control when the ball was actually on the stumps for both teams. Yeah, so, I mean Australia survived 16, 15.8 false shots per for each dismissal. India survived 7.6. But so, that hey, is overall. Hey, but India the... lost control in the toss only, man. First of all. <laughs> what do you what mean control lost... figures after that? Cummins also wanted to bowl. Yeah, to be fair. He, will, he will say that said... because he wants a KKR contract for the next 20 years. He will try to <laughs> please Rohit Sharma. He'll say, oh yeah, yeah, we also want to bowl. But in, this, um, in his uh, heart, he'll be like, oh great, this fool has decided to bowl. Wait, what, Who what, decides is to compli- bowl? what is this complicated story now? To please, uh, to get a KKR <laughs> contract, he has to, he has to please Rohit Sharma. Rohit Sharma is moving or what? No, no man, no. these, <laughs> these uh, overseas cricketers now, uh, now too eagerly adopt the Indian culture because they don't want to be seen like unlikable by the Indian masses. So they will be like, yeah, politely saying, yeah, yeah, that's a great uh, decision. We also wanted to bowl first. Mm. What a thoughtful decision. And then they'll be laughing in the dressing room saying this idiot went and started to, you know, he gave yeah. us half the match. I was actually shocked that Cameron Green uh, did not, uh, you know, personally go to the umpire and say, no, I'm sorry, that is not a catch that I should have <laughs> appealed for. Please, please uh, don't, uh, you know, go to the third umpire. Please give it not out. You know, that should have been the way uh, normally in an in an IPL dominated world. I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that guy is not getting 15 crores ever again in his life now. If he, he because of this 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 one catch. Are you kidding? I think Mumbai Indians are probably going to give him a bonus and get ask 
try to tempt him so that he'll play for all their franchises now. <laughs> no, <laughs> Mumbai Indians are going to go the other way, man. They're like, okay, this guy when he's playing for Australia, he's giving us headache. So first of all, get him, get him as a Mumbai Indians player, and then whenever Australia wants permission to play him, we'll say no. Sorry, we have some yeah. tournament for him to play. Your, you guys are not getting him. Your your faith in Mumbai Indians' interest in the welfare of the Indian Test team is very very touching, huh? Mm-hmm. No, no, not welfare of the. They would they like say, Mumbai well, Indians. <laughs> Mumbai Indians and all this IPL, dude. Their TV contracts have like exploded in value. You know, they would like nothing better than for Test cricket to fall in the ocean and sink. Okay, which is probably which is probably like the where it's going anyway, right? So, in uh, how many uh, you think in ten uh, years' time we are going to be talking about WTC and all? I think that tournament will die yes. after uh, some two so. cycles. I think yeah. we are. Oh, you think because, we are going to? Okay, okay. Yeah, because <laughs> the the paradox is that the paradox is that the amount of Test cricket being played has also been increasing in the in the IPL era so far. Yeah, but that is uh, look at the lopsidedness of it. No, the big three versus the rest and all also. No, but it's less lopsided than it used to be. Okay, uh, another discussion. But tell me, uh, would you have picked Ashwin? I have no problem whether they picked Ashwin or whether they picked Umesh Yadav. As far as I'm concerned, playing on that wicket in England, it's not a big advantage to play either one. You know, it, it's not like you're picking between, you know, Pat Cummins and Shane Vaughan, you know, in these conditions. You know, you're picking between bowlers who are going to be, you know, steady at the most uh, for much of the match. You know, so, okay, on the fifth day, Ashwin might have come into his own. But then on the fifth day, Umesh Adam might also have come into his own. One of the reasons why I think they didn't play Ashwin is this thing about, you know, winning the toss and bowling first. You know. Yeah, because they felt that... Uh... It it could help the fast bowlers on day one. Yeah, but you know, basically, I think it's it's a margin call, man. I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's it's not if you if you set out to look for reasons why Ashwin should have played, you'll I'm sure you'll find them, you know. But that's not a good way to think no, about no. it. No, no, I'm saying when you pick. Okay, my only question is when you pick between, and I don't know how they do it, but when you pick between bowlers, if you were to look at the control that a bowler gives you. Then Ashwin goes ahead of Umesh and Shardul immediately, right? I mean, uh, he has been, uh, he, especially in the last uh, few years, it's been hard to hit him because he generally doesn't bowl that too many bad balls. And uh, like most spinners will give you that uh, one free hit in the over. But Ashwin has been pretty controlled, right? Irrespective of thing. I mean, in Australia, he was good when um, he bowled there and... So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are plenty of good reasons to pick Ashwin. No, I mean it's not like it's a. It's not like it would have been a terrible decision if they picked Ashwin. But I mean, look, in Test cricket in England has gone so far in 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 the direction of like fast bowling now that I don't think it's. I mean, you cannot, especially these English writers and reporters. You know, are wondering, oh, why didn't you pick Ashwin? When have they? When did they last prepare a pitch in England which merited two spinners, man? You know, I mean, and and this is not normal. You know, like in the, for instance, you know, I was looking at this, at you know, in the fifth, in the in the in the in the fifties and the sixties, for instance, from nineteen fifty five to nineteen sixty five, and from nineteen sixty five to nineteen seventy five, about between sixty and sixty five percent of the overs in a Test match in England were bowled by fast bowlers. You know. In the re- most recent decade, from like 1995 onwards, three out of four overs in England have been bowled by fast bowlers. You know that's not normal. That's something that they've cultivated. You know that that's like that's as much a c- designer pitch and conditions creation as you know India turning in, 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 to, to playing three spinners. You know from I remember Chauhan and Raju and Kumble and Arshad Ayub and. Uh, all, all, all those people since the 80s, they've been doing that. And in, you know, in the 70s, the, they, they never really played the quartet, but they had one. Uh, India doing it in India, you know. But even Dude, in India, then, then India, I have a question. Okay, so fine. Forget the Ashwin question. Why do Australia pick Lion? They could have gone with four pacers. No, 
I mean, at no, least with uh, Ashwin Jadeja, we understand that he gives you batting. Uh, no, so therefore, okay, you, fine. Uh, spin is a bonus. So he also but, gives you bowling. No, I mean one spinner. I mean, I don't think. I don't think this was a. four fast bowlers pitch you know i think or a five fast bowlers pitch i think this was a 4-1 pitch you know that um, so no you know, i'm saying why one why 4-1 i don't understand what what is this there might be circumstances <laughs> where you know you might want to bowl a spinner you know and at some point you have to give the fast bowlers a break and then you need some quality no yeah. no and also in a in conditions like england uh, I'm um, saying when the ball, ball gets to, old, also it becomes a little bit useful to have a one spinner, no? From one. Yeah, and it's also useful are, are to have a spinner to say, limit, the, da- limit say, the damage at times. You can't yeah. say that a, a a country is so, you know, conducive to fast bowling, and then have a spinner there for decorative reasons. No, that is See, that is an inefficient way reasons, of designing a eleven. No, he's not there for decorative reasons. No, I mean that I don't. You see, the point is that. If you don't have four fast bowlers, no, then uh, basically once the opening spells are over, you have to bowl a spinner from one end. You know, whereas if you have a four fast bowlers, you can bowl spinners, uh, fast bowlers for twenty overs straight, right, uh, from both ends. That that's basically so. So you can basically attack from both ends for much longer if you have four fast bowlers. You know, whereas. And and then later in the match when the spinner comes on, you can then have a spinner bowling from one end and rotate the fast bowlers on the other end, right? So that that's a, that's how generally these things go. I mean, even when Vaughn was there, Australia did this, no? So yeah, man. So I'm saying I'm I'm saying if you have a model, you follow that model. You India's model has been five bowlers. So pick your uh, best five. Who are your best five among the among the ones that you picked for this? WTC. No, but that has not been their model. No, their model has not only been five bowlers; it has also been conditions based. Like, see, come on, Shardul played in uh, England in uh, the last tour and did well. Man, I mean, he got he, he even the overly got wickets. He got uh, uh, wickets. He yeah, won you a test in. He Shardul got Shardul runs in the oval. Shardul Tucker has a test average of twenty four, man, coming into this match. So, see, if it is based on conditions, and we have been talking about tall bowlers. Then that should have been Unadkar. No, Unadkar should have been in the eleven, right? Yeah, but like, Unadkar can't, can't, can't give you the batting. No, that is also what they're trying to balance. Because if you have Unadkar, then your batting start, then your tail starts at what? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Wait, wait. First, first, first it is I want your tail understand. starts at four, man. Yeah, your tail first starts I want at to one. Understand. First, I want to un- want to understand what 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 character Ashoka is playing right now. <laughs> I am saying, see, you, you, you give reasons, okay? When someone counters a reason, saying that why, why could this not have been followed? You give another reason. Just see, whenever Ashwin no, 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 is involved, wait, wait. why I'll not hold... is not a why not is not a question. No, why not is can be equally asked about all kinds of things. No. Hey, nobody is asking why not bring you Dhoni out did. of retirement. Everybody knows that is that is like a stupid thing to say. But no, when you have the world number, saying, yeah, people are saying. But yeah, but anyways, generally you know that that's no, a no. silly thing to Here's say. Here's the deal, right? Here's the deal, Ashoka. Whatever we are talking, the team knows exactly all the possibilities. Plus, they know hundred things more, right? Like they have hundred times more information that we have. So if you take them in good faith, then obviously you will say that okay, they have also grappled with this question and they have come to the answer based on. something i mean of course they want us i mean of course they want if they want to win they will pick the best team man i mean if so so the fact but they have not won no one. so that's why the questions are there if they have won the cup i will figure out okay ashoka, i swear ashoka i thought you were going to ask him directly what is this good faith you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean see if you are someone who says that uh, you know this guy is not being picked because uh, of uh, you know his relationship with him whatever whatever then that is a different issue i mean that is you are arguing on bad faith and who nobody can help but it's so okay so the only point here is that uh, let's forget the match the only way you can argue about selection is before the match so the question is did india and australia australia going by what kamin said but did india really misread the conditions by going with this Uh, fast bowlers and going with uh, and and bowling first because yes. number one there yes, was no test it. at the there has been no test at the oval in June for like forever maybe and number two 
you know there was a overcast there was like a thing they played a, and the match that they played at the oval last time the test that they played actually helped the fast bowlers more than this one did like umesh had a fine test and shardul had a good test uh, so you know all that could have played a factor in in the fact that they misread this pitch which happens from time to time remember that test where they picked uh, uh, kuldeep at lords in like an absolute seamer friendly uh, pitch back in 2018 when they lost the test big so those things happen yeah and i will say this though that the conditions in the first session the first day first session were really really hard i mean uh, not easy to bat at all there was the ball was moving around and there was this little bit of up and down i mean uh, if you remember warner and labushin got hit multiple times on their arms because there was variation in bounce it was not easy to bat now the question is whether you risk losing half your side in uh, those 30 overs or not and you can debate about that and say that no no you know ravi shastri said that it showed lack of positive intent or whatever i don't necessarily agree i think given that you decided to play for four fast bowlers that will those will be the conditions where they are most likely to get wickets and so it's a reasonable gamble I mean it's ironical that Ravi Shastri is saying dropping of Ashwin is <laughs> lack of positive intent. <laughs> what what is that guy man? What the hell? <laughs> We pulled him out from under the bus. Hey, one yeah. West Indies series this guy dropped Ashwin man. Where he actually I did know. well. Yeah, exactly. He that that's where it started in fact. I'm, if I'm not wrong, it was the West Indies series where Jadeja over Ashwin started and then it continued. Uh, ever since then this operation against tamil will not stand man this will not stand <laughs> i was waiting i was waiting for that yeah yeah, Wait, yeah. who is the second my... who is the second tamil who's being oppressed yeah who is washington sundar murali oh, yeah, vijay <laughs> we have a historical backlog of so many people there yeah badrina natarajan 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 was injured so at least we are reasonable like we are not you know stupid <laughs> hello natarajan is not going to play another test okay if he does it will be like a gaba miracle or something i don't think natarajan is even in line in the top 7 uh, or 8 uh, in the indian bowling attack so anyway uh going to uh, no wait know, wait i want to make one point yeah yeah sure 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 about the, because i thought of it when you said that you know mesh and thakur had a had a i i just found this out on this weekend i was i was not surprised by it but i was struck by it this indian team which has been playing test cricket in 2023 is their oldest ever test 11 if you measure it by average age and also by median age i mean the the median age of this side was 34 you know which is india never had a side with a median age of 34 Uh, before so so i mean this is a old team there they one the downside of all of them coming through at the same time is that all of them are getting old at the same time all, so all this is setting up for csk like uh, situation by the way all of them are all of them are also like thakur and and what's his name umesh they are also two years older than they were in 2021 and like for thakur for someone like umesh and all who doesn't play that much ipl and doesn't play you know other formats that he's what umesh what 37 now that's a bad yes 35 by 35 36 i think something 35 36 i honestly think i think we've seen this team peak i mean that was in for me 2021 that tour of england those four test matches that was this team at its peak i i honestly think they are on the decline now god knows what version of bumrah will come back when he does come back I don't know if he'll be the same bowler that we saw in the West Indies, and I, I really don't know. It's a very gloomy thought, but I think we may have already seen uh, the most successful Indian team ever peak already. Yeah, and even if he comes back, uh, whether he will be able to play all formats, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not going to be easy. I mean, a bowler of that kind, with his style and his pace and the amount of exertion on each ball. Yeah. Uh, I mean it's you know to bowl uh, four overs is one thing but to bowl uh, f- 15 overs uh, uh, I mean 10 15 overs on a it's not easy I mean yeah. a day you're looking at 15 to 20 overs at least if not more not easy at all yeah where there is a point when you can not read that right like you can easily uh, miss that moment where you say that the team has peaked 
and then what happens is you move go on for another one or two years without you know making taking any sort of uh, you changing any sort of combination or anything and then if if you do that then it just gets worse and worse i mean this is what happened in 2011 right we remember that famous uh, 0 08 sequence that happened so it could well be that the team takes a bit of a hit i mean in india i guess they will still continue to win uh, though whether they they will be as invincible is the question but yeah they could they could go through a transition phase for the next 3 years i don't know because because i think genuinely we lucked out in the last 6 7 years if you if you actually look back uh, nobody ever thought that ishant would become that good in his second phase shami was good but now what he's like sense sense huh is, what you're saying it's all kohli's body language man come on <laughs> get with the program No, no, but but the Ishan point, uh, just uh, to go back to the height point, Ishan could have been vital here. Not not this Ishan, but a bowler like Ishan could have been yeah, vital. Yeah, and here. Ishan Sharma actually has been vital because not only because of his height, but because he's basically been unhittable. You know, I mean, his accuracy has been incredible, uh, and he gives so much control. Uh, you know, as a change bowler, but. I don't I think he's basically done now. I don't I don't think he's going to come back. Yeah. He I, I think mean, he's done as well. He's uh, not played a first class match for like ages, right? No, I think he did play for Delhi this season, but I don't know whether it was uh limited overs or tests. I uh, I think he played Ranji, I think. I'm, I'm sure I saw some so score cut somewhere. But uh anyway, so but I also believe that he's done. right and uh, umesh yadav is 35 so gone uh, shami is 32 now so one more cycle left for him i would hope bumra as prashant says i don't know how he is going to come back basically now it's just Sh- siraj and uh, shardul i uh, from this match shardul That's what man how many uh, it's not like shardul is going to play every test i mean in india no, no but, but they, they are going to the uh, india is going to tour no somewhere and he is going to feature somewhere but that's about it this is kind of the end Why for do? the bowling attack uh, we are at the very end and ashwin and jadeja jadeja is 35 now ashwin is 36 so jadeja is fit so maybe 2 3 years you can give him ashwin i don't know if you can give him 2 3 years the and anyways you don't even play him so what 2 3 years give him 25 years he will never play if he at this rate so so basically but this luck lucked out means what like every team that lucked uh, out in the sense come... that no no lucked out in the sense that I, as you said we have been watching cricket for 25 years never has there been such a you know collection of bowlers who hit a peak at a relatively in a 6 7 years time right everyone was at their peak this this could be the peak of shami this could be peak of ishan umesh umesh in india ashwin uh, jadeja everyone you know performing at peak capacity in this 6 7 years that is rare for indian cricket i don't i think that is even rare for countries they, i mean when countries go through that phase they actually become very very good sides they become that captain led you you start naming them labeling them under the captain like a steve or a Or, or a Lloyd, or or let's say now Kohli. So we had that peak now for six seven years, and that is a rare coincidence. And we have been fortunate that way. And I don't think even if we find replacements, competent replacements for all these people, I don't think we'll get like a bunch of eight or nine good bowlers at their peak. So that is the that is also the source of the frustration, right? Like you had this. generation of fast bowlers and bowlers in general who reached their peak at the same time they were like this period of 6 7 years where you could have actually won everything and then you had these missed opportunities right these that we spoke about so i mean new zealand no but, fair enough that but, but, but i think we, south africa england and uh, these wtcs are thing yeah prashant no but should be the the thing is no 
unfortunately every uncle who's watching cricket today and i'm including all of us also in this all of us yeah. all of hey, us hey, yeah, yeah. don't include me i am yeah. <laughs> i am just 16 no no so every <laughs> uncle every uncle who's watching cricket today has seen two all conquering dynasties no they've seen west indies and australia but that is not the natural order of things you have extremely successful cricket teams that do well they don't necessarily have to beat everybody everywhere so unfortunately these are like those iit top rankers who make life miserable for everyone you know everyone is like ah look at them you should be that successful i mean that's not normal i mean graham natural. smith was a dynasty man nobody yeah. even even brings him up exactly exactly so it's i'm just saying that 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 bar that you should have a team that wins against everybody in every country is a very high bar i mean it's very unnatural actually very few teams have actually done it there are there are 18 series which a team can play right home and away against nine other opponents yeah you know, let's let's leave ireland and afghanistan aside right now you know india have won 13 out of the 18 series and they've lost three right now you know that you, you can't really do much better than that you know realistically you know, i mean if you are doing better than that then like there's basically no good teams anywhere exactly you know, even in their home conditions exactly. and then you get like a steve war style thing where one side has won and megra and uh, no other team in the world has more than one decent bowler you know and so yeah. no i guess the the and then you the get marker. you get like you get like fat end records like ponting and aden you know the i think the marker for these teams is also that you do something that your predecessor didn't right so uh, like winning in england like india haven't won in england since 2007 so winning in england would have been could have been that thing india have never won in south africa in fact so you know those kind of series wins could have sort of set that shade it's not again this is not to say that this is a bad team but i'm saying that these kinds they of series they won twice like in instance, australia they won they won twice in australia for for sure that is a definitely a distinguishing marker from any other you team are, you you have taken like you have taken uh, prashant's uh, you know thing about you being an uncle to heart man <laughs> <laughs> but but see yeah yeah but see yeah, they, yeah. Didn't, they didn't they yeah, didn't yeah, win in yeah, zealand that is true they uh, didn't win yeah, in new zealand they didn't win they didn't zealand, not in south africa not in england you know all yeah, the so, things so like they, a, what i'm saying is that the australian team would never be considered great if they don't win an ashes an england team will never be considered great if they don't win an ashes right yeah but that's a dumb measurement no yeah but that's also the way it is yeah, no but so what is wrong no so why 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 go after it this is I mean, this is like, what this is this is why i i become trenchant it seems <laughs> because i because when something is dumb you say it's dumb no like what what is big deal boss uh, th- th- this is i know i know everybody will come and say when it matters after i finish this point but under kohli we won 40 tests and lost 17 40 17 is is a is is not a good record it's a insanely brilliant agree, record agree 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 completely agree. I right think, but, I think but everybody people will come back and say but when it matters they bottle it i mean when it matters is when you turn down the tv da that is <laughs> irrelevant in the cosmic order of things no 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 the I thing is this, the thing is this vendetta against rohit sharma there are two kinds of great teams okay one kind of great team has trophies another kind of great team does not have trophies now which that is the thing right no like, no there are only two no. kinds of great teams one is a legitimately good great team another has a good pr that's all <laughs> that that will never stop yapping about how great it is like when or, when there is no evidence to the i mean or if you are if you are new zealand how nice it is oh, yeah there is there nice is guys. there is no team in the world right now which can compete with both pace and spin like india can there has rarely been a team in test history which could do that you know you can think of the england team of the 50s which could do that you know you could think of, okay fine with a little bit of generosity of spirit you can say that you know the australia with one and it could do that though it couldn't i mean they lost to an india with one spinner and like literally no other bowling in 2001 so i mean and and the one time that was australians played a decent attack they lost in england in 2005 Test cricket has been such a small game for much of the 20th century 
and in that it's not that hard to find eras in which you know the five or six other teams are not very good and one team happens to have two or three great bowlers you know you i mean that's what happened to what bradman's invincible so far you know england didn't have any bowling only after the second world war until fred truman and brian setham came along in like 51 52 so it's not it's not like it's and and, and, and at the same time australia had you know ray lindwall and all these people so it's it's like test cricket is so small that when some team has great bowlers and no other team has great bowlers they tend to build a, like a dynasty you know and their batsmen also tend to get fattened you know like if this current indian batting played in like 2000 or 2000s they would also all make 10000 runs back. i have to say something about the best test batting i have seen in a really long time which happened in this test match i can't believe we haven't spoken about it already uh steve smith in this match just took my breath away i mean he was batting on a different level on a different planet than everybody else simply because of the serenity of his batting you know he was just so calm and so in control and so brilliant to watch in fact uh the first innings except for one crazy shot that he attempted against jadeja where which also went for four Uh, which was incidentally similar to the shot that he played and got out in the second innings he was so much in control uh and i just want to say that you know in past on past occasions when i've seen steve smith bat well he was scoring at a much quicker pace here i saw him bat with it was the kind of serenity that a test player has when he plays ranji you know where he is one notch above whatever is being thrown at him and that was what he gave off in this innings and i also loved the way he played almost i mean it's a thing that people and this is the dishonesty of of writing i mean you say about vvs lakshman that he hits the same ball through the covers and he can flick the same ball through the onside steve smith actually did that in this innings and he was breathtaking to watch especially when he clears his left leg and squares up and whips it through a uh, square leg you know a ball which most batters would hit between mid on and mid wicket he's actually able to get that kind of angle on it it was amazing to watch it was artistry of the highest caliber i agree with everything prashant says you know there you know which is you know steve smith is a he is a phenomenon there has not been a, i have not seen another batsman like him when look at the landscape now you know uh, new zealand have this fantastic attack when they're all fit south africa has this fantastic attack when they're all fit England have this fantastic attack when they're all fit. India have this fantastic attack when they're all fit. You know, and Australia though obviously do have a superb attack. You know, Pakistan are also not bad. You know, so and West Indies so, probably have their best attack in yeah, a while. Yeah, Kim, Kimar Roach is still a phenomenal bowler. So look at the landscape now and to do what Smith is doing in this landscape to be confronted with the problems he's confronted with in this landscape. you know he's ashwin and jadeja in india on quote unquote designer pitches still making runs you know he's a phenomenal player i mean the 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 range of problems he's been confronted with and the solutions he keeps producing are just sensational and all this despite losing one year to a hopelessly unjust ban and yeah and also must be said yeah prashant must be said he lost one year at his absolute zenith it's not just any year i mean he was he was Correct. batting like a dream <laughs> at that time i mean even even in this test match right i mean you can make the argument that india did not bowl optimally at travis head okay they did not tuck him up enough they did not attack the stumps enough they did not bowl short enough to him they did not trouble him on his weakness you can make all those arguments uh, with steve smith they tried everything they tried everything that they could and he didn't even look like getting out so even if they had got travis said early there's no way they would have won this test because you know that guy was batting like a dream at the other end he was just at a different class a different level than everyone else on this surface no and and also like having steve smith bat like that is actually quite liberating for the batter at the other end like i would in fact credit a lot of that travis head's uh, risk taking to the fact that you had this uh, rock at the other end who was not going to be moved and who was scoring who was basically doing what he wished 
So, you know, that that has a big difference in the way teams bat too. I mean, Travis Head, if he were batting with a player out of form, might not have taken as many chances. It might not have come off, whatever. So, Smith was... And, in fact, I like the Smith second innings a little bit more than his first innings. I mean, both were phenomenal. But uh, I was a bit disappointed when he got out, especially, you know, when he played that shot, because I thought that this is going to be such a phenomenal century to watch like a second century in the test yeah yeah there's there's another interesting thing i noticed in this test match in the first innings uh i found that from overs 30 to 80 almost nothing happened almost no wickets fell for for both sides um and i it it actually led me to wonder if we're going to see something similar to what we saw last year where the ball doesn't do much after it gets old of course, it changed in the second innings and may have to do with the pitch deteriorating. I don't know. But it uh, should be something interesting to watch out for. if, Because I know that uh, after the feedback of last year where they said that the Duke ball doesn't do anything after the 30 overs or whatever, I think they've gone back to the drawing board. should be interesting to see what kind of balls they come up with for the Ashes. should be fun to watch. Yeah, that is going to be a really fun series. Yeah. Kartikeya, we can't let you go before um, talking about your favorite, Rahane. Really? (laughs) Better than Vives Lakshman, you said at one point. No, no. The (laughs) argument is, Kartikeya, the argument is that because he got dropped and went back to Ranji and made all those runs, it is a vindication that it was right to drop him and bring him back. I have nothing to say to that. If that is true, then literally anything can be connected to anything, man. You cannot randomly do these things. I, we we had a big argument on this. You remember last time? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, it was me and like two uh, one other guy against like pretty much everybody else. All the, all of Uncle Dumb was way, like, lined up against me. You know, basically, look, I am just going to repeat what I think and what I say every time when we talk about batsmen. Batsmen don't go from being good to bad week after week. They are the same. You know, When they have a little bit of luck and when they score some runs, people say they are good. And when they stop scoring runs or when they go to a bad run, people say they are bad. But they are the same player both in both cases, man. And... Why now, like Rane, Kohli, Pujara, these people are like 35 years. They are not going to change their batting now. No batsman really does that. And you know how good they are. And that's what they are going to produce. You know, so Rane is not suddenly going to become a player who, like, in the, like, in the Steve Smith class, you know, who's like, just, you know, Dif- different. Steve Smith lives in a higher world. Okay. But Rani is still going to be a competent player. Right? It, 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 this is like, you know, there's a, there's this XKCD cartoon, which is where, like really famous, which is like, you know, here's a weighted random number generator and uh, which has produced some results. Now, you know, let's craft a narrative around it. You know, this is basically what we do for batsmen. You know, which is that, you know, the, the, the basic fallacy is that if a batsman gets out to an early mistake, then he's played badly. And if the batsman doesn't get out to an early mistake, he's played well. That's not reasonable. Yeah, right? yeah. But uh, like we brought up on that podcast, well, the, during that big argument, over we are talking over three years. Yeah, sorry, Sidvi. I, I, I will say this. I will say that one of the benefits of, of the era that we live in is that uh, some of these highlights are available on online. And please do, re- even if you watch the game, my request to you is please go back and watch because you will you will see that there is so much more to it. So just to give you a couple of examples, uh, when uh, Jadeja got out in the first innings, my initial reaction was that that was a poor shot. I mean, there was no, he didn't have to be playing at that. I felt like he overcommitted. Uh, it was only when I saw the replay that I realized that it was actually the bowler's dip that had done him in. I mean, he probably thought it was closer than it was and therefore overcommitted and therefore poked. Uh, but on when I saw it live, I felt like it was the it was a batting error. 
But when I saw it a couple of times, I realized that there is a bowler skill which has induced that error. It's the same with Rohit Sharma in the second innings. I thought he was batting beautifully. I mean, it gave me a lot of pleasure to watch that 40-odd. Again, you can say that that was a stupid little shot that he was trying to play. But again, in actual fact, you have to give the bowler credit for that because it is, again, the dip and maybe a little bit of drift that did him there. Um, and also bowling from around the wicket where, exactly. you know, and still getting the ball to pitch in line, which Lyon has now mastered in, over the last few years. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and just bear in mind that this is somebody who is not shy to play the big shot down the ground, nor is he shy to play the slap sweep. I mean, he obviously wanted to play that particular variant of the sweep because he estimated a certain length and it wasn't that length. So, yeah, I mean, this is actually a test which saw very, very high degree of skill. Uh, and please do go back and watch the highlights is what I would say to anyone. You'll, you'll, un you'll uncover more layers to what transpired over the last five days. Yeah, I'm surprised you're saying we live in an era where we can see highlights and all. I'm like, okay, thankfully, this is an ICC event outside India. People can actually see it. The home series means that's all. Nobody can see anything. No, you, you have can to see go it into that BCCI website and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to yeah, go yeah. into that labyrinth called yeah. BCCI.tv. And then yeah. by the time you find anything, you will be like, okay, yeah. I think I have to retire from life. Yeah. For now. <laughs> Uh, I want to actually quote a tweet that we got from a listener and it, uh, you know, really kind of the listeners to write to us and to the 81 All Out handle. So this is from On and Off Drive, who actually traveled to the game uh, to watch this WCTC final, I think, uh, traveled across uh, continents. And uh, so the quote was, uh, the tweet was, uh, went to the WTC final all five days and had some amazing moments in the crowd. Common refrain I heard was a sense of an end of an era and Ashwin, Bumrah and Pant missing out being such a big dent to what should have been a fine bookend match for this generation. And um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, straight uh, from somebody who was at the ground and taking in the impressions. So uh, sort of echoes what you're saying. David is worth about five, five, ten minutes, I think, uh, on, on this, you know, because there are echoes in... Of Dravid's tenure as captain in captain, in yeah. tenure as manager. He has and become actually, chapel, basically. The, yeah. the, this is especially good time to talk about because Sid actually covered Dravid's tenure. So Sid should actually talk about. It. No, see, the thing is, I covered Dravid's tenure as captain. Okay, yeah. but I don't really uh, I I don't really know what is going on behind the scenes in this team as a coach because I'm not uh, doing day-to-day -day coverage. And unfortunately, uh, you find very little uh, reportage these days in the Indian media because number one, there is no access, there is very little access. And number two, people, I think, are just, uh, that's not clickbaity enough for them to actually report what is going on, what is the coach doing, what is the, you know, what is the team approach etc because obviously it is more uh, you can get like uh, 10,000 more likes if you just say that uh, uh, Anushka Sharma is a curse to the team or something like that so uh, yeah so I actually can't comment I mean there are people right they posted they have posted a picture of her and saying that whenever she attends a match India loses so some absolute BS like that. entire day yesterday man. Yeah. So anyway, so this is the misogyny if we keep, that uh, if we, we have keep to put going up on with. these tangents. Prasant is going to leave, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. The, but Dravid, talking about Dravid, so I am not that informed to talk about his coaching. I wish that there is somebody in the mainstream who actually does a piece about uh, you know it'll be good to know like what you know what is he bringing to the team and if he's uh, if there is anything to uh, even fault. I mean, and and during the chapel time, I can talk about that. That there were players, there was a section of players who were unhappy with a uh, few things Chapel was doing, primarily talking behind their backs to the media off the record and you know saying that this player is not doing this, this player is not doing that. And in, in Indian cricket, things leak, things go back to the players. And so they were sort of losing trust with him. I mean, I don't think Rahul Dravid is doing any of that. I I mean, he's not that. But whether there, you know, there is some Sort of what are the disagreements in the team? Every team does have disagreements. What are the is the approach outdated? I mean, people are making claims saying that Dravid is not uh, up with the times and is not understanding how the game is heading. But uh, uh, is it true? I mean, uh, I mean, he's uh, he's not uh, he wants to win, man. He's not going to 
be uh, silly enough. So I can't uh, comment uh, too much about it. I mean, if, so about this particular coaching tenure. So I think yeah. I was I was I thought you were going to go into another direction, which is that uh, Dravid, like it happened when he was captain, when he's coach, what has happened is that a lot of great players who had had a great few years have sort of started going off the boil, you know, either through injury or because they're in a slump. You know, and, and you remember like 2005, 2006, 2007, uh, yeah. you know, and like Lakshman, Tendulkar, uh, Arbhajan Singh, Virendra Sehwag. Virendra Sehwag actually got dropped from the test team. At some, Zahir. Uh, Zahir. Yeah. They all, they all went through, I mean, Zahir, okay, I don't think it was a slump, but Zahir was just, you know, he, he, he had to sort of, he was not yet in his prime, uh, you know, and he came into his prime around 2007, 2008, something like that. And then he had like three, four great years. But they, so Dravid, when, when Dravid was captain, they had all these players in slumps and it, it's similar now, you know, like you are saying is the end of end of an era and this is also the oldest Indian team. So I think he's caught sort of the fag end of players who are quote unquote over the hill, so to speak. You know, in the sense that these players are not really going to we know what they can do, right? So the, the range of their sort of the range of their capacities is known now not only to india and to rao in the indian management but also to opponents by now so, yeah yeah but then then it is also uh, in, uh, sort of a good skill to recognize that no to recognize and, that you're catching the back end of careers yeah and sort of more than more inter- more than the rahul dravid is in, is interesting because he's the figurehead and etc cetera, etc cetera. and but I'm sort of also equally intrigued by the whole, you know, Bharat Arun leaving and who, I don't know, who Paras Mambre is. Done, Paras, is Paras the, Mambre, yeah. Yeah, so what what the what the scene is over there, you know, what, uh, and and I, I don't really particularly care also about the, you know, the politics and the, the personality conflicts because I think those those things are always there, but they get they get mentioned when teams lose you know no but it could be a question of uh, arun brought more to the table than mambre i mean that that may well Probably. be true perhaps yeah but we don't know no because uh, yeah. no, nobody is really uh, uh, you know no, nobody, nobody is really inquiring nobody is really reporting these things i mean you you need people to actually ask these questions either publicly or privately and come up with a uh, journalistic report but uh, i think uh, you know Either players are just not talking enough or people are just not interested enough. So I, either way, you rarely see, I mean, occasionally you'll see bits and bobs of it in some, you know, corner of a piece, you will see like an interesting r- r- bit of reportage. But these yeah. things require uh, in-depth l- in looks and we don't get that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, one can only, what one says is all conjecture about Dravid and coaching staff and this and that. And, well, if he were to be sacked, he used to be sacked. So, uh, obviously, uh, you know, that uh, that goes with it. But I think his contract goes on till the end of the ODI World Cup. And so, it would be surprising for me if they sack him now. Uh, you know, they would uh, want to wait for at least those uh, few months to get through that ODI World Cup. And India is playing at home in an ODI World Cup and is as I was ever in any World Cup these days, is a favorite. So, would you want to suddenly change a coach at this point? Uh, would you want to leave that? I doubt it. So, I think it will go on. And, uh, of course, if they don't win the one-day World Cup, which is the standard these days. I mean, even yeah. if India enters the final and loses, it's a failure. So, if the, if that happens, then Dravid, I guess, is it will be the end of his term. And then he will move on to doing whatever he was doing before, which is coaching... Yeah, younger cricketers under 19, you know, building, you know, being a mentor for them, which seemed to be working really well when he was doing it. Actually, Dravid's tenure as coach reminds me of Richie Richardson's tenure as captain, where yeah. he where he got a good team which was sort of heading towards a natural decline. And there's not a lot that you can do. Uh, yeah. It's not. I mean, he has the same many of the same names that Shastri had, but they're not necessarily performing as optimally as they were in the Shastri era. 
So no, but uh, that's the thing. No, Prashant, it's also uh, re- important to recognize mm-hmm. that and maybe yeah. switch personnel uh, quickly when no, I, when you re- realize that. No, yeah. no, I'm saying if anyone else had been captain of Richie Richardson's side, I don't think the West Indies team would have done any better. I mean, there was a natural decline. It 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 has to happen. I don't think that you can necessarily improve the fortunes of this team by changing the coach. Is what I'm trying to say. It it will not make. Uh, Umesh and Shardul better third and fourth bowlers. Yeah, I mean, I think this all this stuff about managing transitions and all. I don't know how much how much it's possible, man. It's like you can't you you can't really look. Uh, what you're replacing a lot of experience and a lot of ability, you know, and a lot of lot, sort of people who are used to facing like Cummins and Stark and you know genuine pace on lively test pitches, not on like what. In T20, are considered to be bowler-friendly pitches. You know, <laughs> like uh, they in T20, they they see a pitch where you know uh, in a test match a team will make like you know 300 for five on the first day, uh, and they call it like a you know a bowler-friendly pitch. You know, and then so but what you what you really to to sort of replace like for like, you know that you have to find like a 28-year-old batsman. In his prime, who's you know played thirty tests and drop him in, and you can't do that. You know you have to start from zero again. You have to whoever you pick, you know, is going to have you know a debut series, and you know who's going to have a bad run, and everything that Kohli had in his early years, everything that you know Rane or whoever all these people had in the early years. You know, so. You know, the one guy we haven't mentioned at all in this podcast so far is KL Rahul. You know, he's a superb player who's definitely probably going to be the next India captain. Uh, uh, thank you for listening to AT on All Out. This was a great episode. <laughs> end, of, end of episode. <laughs> KL Rahul. Who wants to talk about KL Rahul? Nobody wants to talk yeah, about yeah. KL Rahul. <laughs> no, no, we have enough time in the next uh, few months to talk about KL Rahul because uh, the, he will keep uh, coming up. No, ODIs, World Cup, everything I will think, be there to talk about him. Yeah, I think my my if I was a, if I was a betting if I was put to make a bet, I would say that this transition is not going to happen for another two three years. As in Rohit Sharma and Pujara and Kohli and Ashwin and Jadeja and all these people, they are not going to leave for another two three years at least. But Rahul Dravid will probably leave before the end of the year. I think if India don't win that World Cup, one day World Cup, Rahul Dravid will be done and uh, with his uh, time. Oh, and you think also, he'll be sacked? No, he may leave. I mean, his contract yeah. ends. No. So yeah. what? It won't be renewed, basically. Uh. Yeah. No, and also, also, see, the other thing is there's a problem, right? Like you cannot, if even if you genuinely believe that you know, uh, there is a certain uh, cricketer like who is done, like a big cricketer. Like if you genuinely believe that Virat Kohli is not going to reach a certain level of play, you're what? You're going to go and drop him or what? I mean, this is not a situation where it's... Yeah, it's not. Because also, it's economics. No. Virat Kohli is required for uh, eyeballs, for TV, for everything. There is an added element here. So I'm not saying is... By the way, I'm not saying you should be dropped. So please, all Kohli bucks and all don't come after me. But I'm saying, even <laughs> if we reach that situation, see, like, see, this, this is where you go back to the Greg Chapel Ganguly situation, right? So back then, you had a coach who went to the captain directly and said that he should drop himself. All right. Now, whether that was prudent or not is a matter. But how will that ever happen now? Will you ever go to Virat Kohli? Do you think Rahul Dravid is going to go to Virat Kohli and say that, uh, you know, he's going to be dropped? Not, 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 not only did Chapel go to Ganguly and say that, you know, look, I, this is what I think. Apparently, Chapel wrote a letter to BCCI saying all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the letter is public. In B, someone yeah. in BCCI promptly leaked that. <laughs> yeah, it got leaked. And uh, it was, uh, in fact, the person who published that leak was given an award. Uh, you know, which is quite uh, weird for me. I mean, what? You got leak, You got a leak and you got an award for it. No. The scoop, okay, so, man. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But uh, you know, I think the I think uh, investigative work is more important than getting a leak and just publishing it. But anyway, leave all that aside. But yeah, so that letter is uh, online, by the way. If you want, you can read it. So, but n- none of that is going to happen. The BCCI is too like 
nobody is going to uh, go and say tell these players you know that your time is done i mean you, they will wait till the uh, getting the very last drop of their brand value before uh, even thinking of letting them go i mean look at dhoni right for instance he's going to play the ipl for probably another year maybe two who knows i mean um, and uh, you know he's we saw what he is with the ipl he's basically like you know batting for those 10 balls and you know the rest of the time he's leading the side is keeping is still good but um, anyway so yeah thank you for joining prashant thank you kartikeya thank you ashoka thank lots you so to much. discuss yeah and uh, we will uh, be back with you as usual in a week or 10 days time for another podcast and then there will be uh, we will be there will be more uh, cricket to discuss at some point test cricket there's also you know we could do something around the ashes promises to be a really exciting series and yeah lots to discuss and uh, be back to uh, at 81 all out on twitter or 81 all out.com you can send feedback to our website please read the books that we are republishing the summer game by gideon hay is the latest and i can give you links to the book and the other books that we republished also you know coffee ko hyphen fi.com Uh, slash 81 all out you can contribute any amount of your choice it's a crowd funded platform and uh, yeah see you as i said in a week or 10 days time goodbye india have won the series they're going to get back for two india home lords goes wide